the Stoger STR-9S combat shooting impressions. You'll see our absolute cold shots, first impressions with this gun. We'll test the magazines, full magazine plus one. Do our trademark what's for dinner test to see what the gun eats. Take it over to the spinner target for sights and trigger control. Some practical accuracy, five shot from seven yards groups. And then you'll get the closing imp impressions from two shooters coming up next on GB Guns. So my first time holding this gun, seeing it, having it in hand, and I'm throwing a mag in, I'm gonna put some rounds down at our steel. We've got a reduced size torso at about 20 yards from Tia. Yes. 10 rounds of PMC bronze, thanks to our ammo squared supporters. Already I'm wondering if maybe I shouldn't have taken you up on the offer to try out back straps, but let's get through this part. This gun does come with three different back straps that also impact the side of the gun as they're a three-sided back strap. But Tia doesn't like to touch the guns until we're on the range, so a true cold impression. It begs to be rammed. <laughs> <laughs> um, that trigger says, do it again, do it again, do it again. I wasn't always accurate, but it was fun. Um, so far, I'm really enjoying the entire platform. Like I said, I do wish that I would have considered back straps. I'm not sure what it is about the grip that I'm not enjoying. But there, there's something there that I think for me could be improved. Sorry about the mic tap um, and the sights. Perfect. All right, 10 rounds of PMC bronze. Nice tall sights, those green fiber optics. Um, certainly are standing out. It's January here in Oregon, so it's kind of a dark day and it's really easy to see them. I don't know why I'm missing either. Huh, the rear sight does slide a little bit to the right, but not to the left. It's recentering where it's supposed to be. It's kind of spring-loaded. But very comfortable to shoot. Yeah. Um, recoil very manageable and a surprisingly nice trigger. Next we've got a full magazine which fit 20 rounds. There's a plus five base plate on all three of the included magazines. So we'll take that plus one and see how the gun runs fully stuffed. With a total of 21 rounds of PMC bronze, 115 grain. Still have that piece of steel out there at about 20 yards that I'm going to be aiming at, but we're looking to just burn it down and see how these mags run. Sometimes when there's extensions like this, if the spring tension's not right, you can run into issues, especially if run at speed. So that's why I'm going to try to burn it down. No promises though, I'm not Jerry. Whole lot of misses, new record of misses for me, but no issues running. Uh, off camera, we took a look at that rear sight and it appears the spring tension is meant to just push against your adjuster screw. The sight doesn't seem to be moving left to right. Our front sight post seems to be in pretty good. Maybe it's just learning the gun, but that's what we're out here to do. So let's see how it runs. It's that time again, what's for dinner time? Thanks to Emma Squared of some viewer contributions, True Shot Gun Club, and our patrons, we've got 10 different loads. Our lightest here at 65 grain. We're going up to 165 grain today. And as I go by them, you'll see they all have different projectile shapes, overall loaded lengths. The ogive, that's the curve that meets the bore diameter, is in a different spot on each of these. We've got different case material. We're looking to see, does the gun feed it from slide lock? Is there enough energy to cycle and pick up another round of the same tyke? And does it lock open when empty? Three shots tells us that. Anything past that's testing the magazine, which really costs too much time and money. So this is what we got. So for circle number one, we have um, Liberty Ammunition's Civil Trainer. This is a 65 grain lead-free um, ultralight recoil round.
So we were hitting low. Yeah, and appear to still be hitting low. May need to adjust the sights. This could be us as shooters erring. It could be these factory sights that came on here. We'll find out as we get more rounds shot. Moving on to circle number two, also 65 grain. This is the ARX uh, Inceptor rounds. Also low. So in from a viewer, we have um, Underwood ammo. These are uh, 100, no, 68 grain plus P extreme defender. I'll put these on circle three. Well, I'll aim for circle three anyway. These are those copper screwdriver tip things that were all the rage on YouTube a couple years back. Ooh, that's Ooh, a percussion. That's a, punchy. that's a plus P. So they're screaming out of a lo longer barrel like this and also hitting low yeah i think i think once you get a couple iterations in we'll confirm that but i'm, I'm fairly certain that we're low on circle four we'll put the uh, center fire next generation 100 grain lead free ball ammunition sights are really Those weren't as low. They sure had a uh, nice bit of recoil, if you will. <laughs> Lasers 115 grain aluminum case ammunition for circle number five. We use steel and aluminum case ammunition in these tests because, well, it's affordable stuff that a lot of people see, but it expands and contracts at a different <laughs> rate than brass does, which is what most guns were designed for. It also has a different friction coefficient. So friction within the magazine and into and out of the chamber is different which can choke some guns. Nice that the uh, wind is no longer br blowing the smoke into our faces. Except for we don't get as many scents. Smelling notes, yeah. yeah. Still low. On circle six, Bellum's 124 grain. This is a full metal jacket and brass case. Tends to be NATO-like feeling pressures. Now oh, we're losing daylight quick. Yeah, we are. Punchy. Hard to not look at the fiber optic and actually look at the edge of the sights. I wonder, Tia, were you looking at the sights or looking at the fiber optic? Uh, the space between the three pieces of fiber optics is where I form my sight picture and ensure that everything is behind it um, and that, that everything is flat. Okay, so you were using the edges of the sights and not the dots? Correct. Okay, which is how we normally shoot. Um, also, did not get slide lock on that bellum. Interesting. Next up. Next up is from ZQI. This is the all the stuff ammo. It uh, is a steel case, but nickel plated steel. The nickel plating helps fight corrosion and lubricate. Uh, it's got less friction. And then we've got a brass jacketed, uh, full metal jacket, ball round. So we go number seven. Stuff's got some spice to it. Mm -hmm. I'd say it's worth considering adjusting these sights. Circle eight from Federal is their Syntec Training Match 124 grain flat nose synthetic jacketed purple, purple bullet. <laughs> 
And you should always insert them with a projectile forward. It tends Helps. to function better that way. <laughs> Circle number eight. They always sound so violent. I was being really careful with my aiming there. And I was aiming at the top of the number eight, like the actual character for eight. So um, most certainly certainly about two inches low, which seems to be about where T was hidden. Well, and so you hold the same, you were holding it about the same level as I was in the top of the numbers. Okay, so these sights certainly do need to be adjusted. Later. For the sake, by the way, of these tests, we're not adjusting the sights in between it. That way you can see if one load has a different result than the other. But long term, we'll need to adjust the sights on this gun. Our ninth uh, load is the Hornady Critical Duty 135 grain flex lock nickel plated case. Uh, rather a long pointy bullet. I find them very aesthetically pleasing. They are sharp looking. They also are, tend to be sharp recoiling. Mm -hmm. For example, hmm, not as low with those loads. Uh, did not get slide lock. Though they sounded punchy and presented with a lot of recoil, it didn't have very aggressive ejection. Yeah, it wasn't terrible in this gun. I wonder if the gun's maybe sprung a little heavy. I mean, we're not having any feeding issues, but we are having side lock shortages on some loads. Um, that could be par also part of why it recoils so nicely. I mean, this is a very comfortable gun to shoot. Our last load is from Ammo Inc. Stealth 165 grain. This is meant to be run in suppressors, but we've got a threaded barrel and suppressor height sights. So chances are, if you've got this gun, you might put a can on it. Yeah, <laughs> stuff always shoots so softly. And did not drop as low. No, it didn't. Um, the, very nice. The cases were just barely hopping out of the slide too, uh, but we got slide lock. So interesting. Next is the spinner. Out there is our six inch Titan Great Outdoors spinner target that we use for sights and trigger control. Speaking of sights, off camera, we raised the sight a total of 13 clicks. Yeah. And it's now hitting just below point of aim. Uh, I can show you the paper that we did it on a little bit later. Anyways, as you hit this small target at distance, it starts moving and gets harder to hit, which makes timing a well-placed shot all the more important. That's why we use it to test our ability to learn the sights and trigger control of a particular gun. I'll never be able to go fast. Hitting just below it. Ah, I ran out. But overall, I had fat. confidence on with it though. Um, it takes me, I have to disengage <laughs> in, you know, making sure that I have a good trigger press, where my sights are, and oh crap, now it's got to swing the right way. So <laughs> It's not an easy test, folks. <laughs> I challenge you. Uh, and yeah, um, but the gun made it easy. And adjusting the sights, I think, definitely helped, um, given that even a couple of those were still low. So I, I am thoroughly enjoying this gun. The sights make things easier for me. The trigger is just very predictable and comfortable, but not over excited. Um, I'll think I'll think of a better word for that. But yeah, overall, I I think I could do that test with this. All right, I've got eight rounds and we are still using that PMC bronze 115 grain.
saving ammo. <laughs> <laughs> um, Some people really enjoy this game. <laughs> <laughs> but uh no it, it's just like uh for those of you wondering about shooting this target it's kind of like shooting a texas star it's one of those where once you kind of learn and get a feel for it it's no longer as intimidating to do this pistol is incredibly comfortable to shoot it i know this is going to potentially come off wrong but it doesn't look like much you know it, it looks like it's an affordable option gun uh, but who cares when it shoots nicely and it, it really does uh, very comfortable the, tr the trigger has it's nice and predictable here in the Pacific Northwest in the winter time these fiber optics are great <laughs> because we can still see them and it made uh, the spinner not bad next we'll do some practical accuracy five shots from seven yards also show you guys that target where we adjusted it was the screw that's on top is your vertical adjustment and we loosened it which allows the spring pressure to raise the rear sight and kind of drifted its way up to being just slightly low instead of being a couple inches low so from seven yards we adjusted those sights and the bottom shots you see there and this is all tia shooting she kept clustering two at a time at the bottom we clicked up four that got us that kind of middle group and then the top pile of holes you see is where we decided to stop after another six or eight clicks it was, it was about 13 clicks total yeah. up to get it to just below the 10. for practical accuracy what have we got we're using Nosler's, um, this is 115 grain, they're a shirt stopping power, asp if you will. And you'll be aiming at? The left circle square. And folks, if you're new to this test, that square is one inch. So from seven yards, it tends to be about the same size as a front sight post. Makes for a great grouping target. <laughs> I was too. I was like, what the I heck happened? I saw the one on the on the top left and I'm like, what is going on today? Five shots from seven yards, also with the Nosler 115 grain ASP, shirt stopping power, on the right circle squ square. I'm going, I'm going. Tall, tall sights. They are. And I originally thought that it was overcompensating for the height of the sight. Um, and that's why I was pulling low. Not my best group. And I did not get slide lock. Are you riding the slide stuff? My thumb might be on it. It does fit perfectly. Yeah. So my only complaint is that i did not take time to figure out if there's a better back strap that would have worked for me i think that i would have had a more comfortable shooting experience um can't redo it it's already done and that's what it comes like in the box so and i i just i really enjoy it like it was really pleasant to shoot really fun um I, I don't know what else to say. Like the trigger is amazing. The sights are great. The grip texture is not too aggressive. It's got, you know, places that you can add stuff if you want. The slide cuts are not too aggressive. In fact, they're, they're almost rounded in comparison to a lot of other guns, but they're still definitive enough that you can get in there and it gives you what you need to, to be able to run that slide. The slide stop works great. Some guns are difficult to use that is to let the hammer forward or the slide forward. Um, overall, I'm, I'm really impressed. You know, it's interesting. We shot the compact model of this not too long ago and it has the same grip texture, but on that smaller gun, it felt more aggressive. 
I don't know if our hands were colder or if it's just that now that that pressure is more evenly distributed across your whole hand instead of concentrated into a small gun. But it, yeah, I agree with you. This feels great. Yeah, I, I really enjoy it. And, and the, the mag, this thing, always helpful in keeping that positive push-pull tension applied there without having to milk the grip too much, like I was having to do with this grip. And that, was, that is a virtue to magwells that I don't think a lot of people ever talk about. For really big hands like my mine, my pinky rests on that magwell and it helps me keep control of the gun. For medium-sized hands like Tia's, it's her support hand that pushes against the magwell and helps keep control of the gun. And I'm noticing this little spot right here fits this hump of the first digit in there really nice. Like it's, it's there. Great job. When we tried the STR-9C by viewer and patron request we, f we thought it was an all right gun uh, yeah we i broke it in the tabletop um my first time taking it apart uh first time that had ever happened to me but i was willing to take that as a as a chance i screwed up maybe some quality control issue at the factory let's see what's going on um we'll try some try another one and and give it a, a just as fair a shake as we did the first time and I'm really impressed with this. I, I think for a budget friendly gun, it's feature packed. It's got everything that you'd want, all the boxes checked that would be on a higher end gun, but at a more affordable price. And it's the lower price and maybe, maybe the aesthetics, depending on your personal preference, are the only thing that are inexpensive about this gun the rest of it the handling the way it shoots everything feels pretty nice we had to adjust the sights out of the box and my five shot group was not my best however during the what's for dinner test i had a couple one hole three shot groups and some that were just two very close holes out of three shots so that could be me or could have been the ammo point is the gun is certainly capable and you're not missing out on anything uh, by getting one of these. What you are missing out on by not getting one is one heck of a performance at a reasonably reasonable price. Uh, these are pretty nicely done. I think we should have experimented with the back straps. I'm sorry guys that we didn't do that. I know that's one of the things we're famous for is that we actually try that and talk about how they fit differently. But with this one out of the box, it, it felt decent enough that we sit down and just run it that way. Uh, what you get when you try different back straps, especially ones that wrap three sides of the gun, is you'll end up with a different length of pull for your trigger finger. And that can help with more naturally landing on um, a good spot to fire. Uh, it can also impact your reach for controls and sometimes change the angle a little bit. So uh, we'll mess with that maybe later on. Sorry, I guess we got some folks wanting to watch this video before it's published. <laughs> <laughs> Stopping to watch this film, but uh, we're at a public range. Anyways, the Stoger uh, STR-9S Combat is a gun worthy of a long name. It shoots pretty well. Thanks for recommending this and thanks for watching.